From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Mr. Costello at the Plantagen Hotel in Vicksburg, Virginia. You left word? Oh, yes, Mr. Costello. I'm acting for Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance. You know, investigation. Oh? I understand you had a burglary down there. We sure did, Mr. Dollar. Well, the main reason I wanted to talk to you, Mr. Costello, was to let you know I'm getting the first plane out of Hartford as soon as the weather clears. Uh, You're coming here to Vicksburg? Yes, that's right. Eastern Seaboard Casualties asked me to investigate the burglary for them. Good. Then I'll expect you when I see you. And I'll be there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Chief Accountant, Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance Company, Providence, Rhode Island. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the plant agent matter. Expense account item one, $2, cab fare, my apartment to the Hartford Airport. Item two, $173. One airline ticket from Hartford to Vicksburg, Virginia, and back again. We took off in 10 below zero weather about 1.30 in the afternoon. By 5 o'clock, we circled into Vicksburg for a landing. Item three, five dollars, care fare, to the Plantagen Hotel, three miles outside of town. A pleasant, spacious, gentle old building set back among the wintry trees. Fifteen minutes after checking in, Mr. Costello appeared, wrung my hand, and reported that the Vicksburg police had apprehended the burglar who had rifled the hotel safe the night before. All of the loot had been recovered. As a matter of form, I spent two hours with the police itemizing the stolen property, which was all intact. Then I returned to the hotel, assured Mr. Costello that everything would be all right, and got busy trying to make return reservations for Hartford. Now, the rest of this report is by way of apology for my tardiness in submitting the expense account. In between phone calls to the airport, I went downstairs to the bar for a drink, and then stepped outside for a walk and a breath of fresh air. In the back of the parking lot behind the hotel, a blonde woman, about 30, in a green suit, was talking to a tall, typically dark man who had his back to me. They were arguing about something. As I walked past them, I couldn't help hearing too well. Please, please help me. Are you talking to me? Yes, please. On your way, mister. This is private. You hear me? (laughs) Just keep your hands to yourself, bud. Well, keep rolling, then. We're having a little argument, private. Please, please, I don't know who you are, but I'm... Shut up. She's uh, had a little too much to drink, mister, that's all. Oh, that's all? Well, it doesn't look that way to me. Now, what's this all about? I just told you, Nosy, she's had a little too much to drink. Now, go on, bud. Get on your way. Wait a minute. I told you to keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. Honey, you want to keep it up? You hear me? Yes. I hear you. And I... I'll let it go this time, mister. Just this once. Do you want to have him hauled in, miss? Oh, no. No, that's all right. It's all right. Okay, then, okay. Come on, beat it, you. Now, listen, Beat it, I said. She's tired of you, and so am I. Go on, beat it. Okay. Just remember, Amy, I was only trying to talk some sense into you. So long, hero. Thanks. Thank you very much. That was awfully kind of you. Okay, did he hurt you? Yes, Where it hurts the most, I guess. I'll never get accustomed to being disappointed in people. Oh, well, he didn't look like your type anyhow. So why don't you just... Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, look now. This is just the end of everything. Everything. Yeah, I I know maybe it looks that way, but, but maybe it isn't. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to have caused you all this trouble. That's okay. It must look rather cheap and dingy. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Well, look, uh, let me ask you something. Did you really have too much to drink tonight? No. No, I only had one drink with him. All right, then maybe you'll let me buy you one. How about it? You're very kind. You look like you should be with someone for a little while right now. So what do you say? How about it? You're a very kind man. (laughs) 
And that's the way it began. In the parking lot outside of the Plantation Hotel in Vicksburg, Virginia. She trembled a little when I led her back inside to the warmth of the bar and the people and sat her down at a booth. Looking back on it now, I guess we had a rather strained, one-sided conversation. She did all the listening and seemed preoccupied with her problems, whatever they were. Even though I'm not the greatest wit in the world, I did manage to get a faint smile out of her. It was a nice smile from a warm, frank mouth. Item four, two drinks for us. (laughs) (laughs) That's cute. See there? Next thing you know, you'll be telling me a joke. Oh, that reminds me. That reminds me of another one. It's, uh, it's one of the oldest and most respected jokes in the country. You've probably heard it a thousand times. It seems ten men were standing in the rain under an umbrella, and none of them got wet. Well, just about then, a fellow walked up. You... You've been very, very kind to me. Thank you again. Well, I'm... I'm glad you feel better. Miss, uh... Are you, uh, from here in Vicksburg? No, my home's in Hartford, Connecticut. I flew down here this afternoon on business... I'm waiting for a flight out. Oh. What's your name? Johnny Dollar. Thank you again, Johnny Dollar. Hmm? Thank you for not asking me my name. For not asking me about the man in the parking lot. For not asking me to explain what my trouble is. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. And thank you for sitting here with me this little while and trying to make me laugh. Hmm. You really feel all right now, huh? Yes, I think so. Good, that's well. Because I wouldn't want to let you go if I thought you were going to step outside and start crying again. No. No, I won't do that. I promise. You sure? Positive. Okay. Ah, you want one more for the road? Oh, thank you, but I'd better not, Mr. Dollar. I really should be getting home. Well, uh, will everything be all right at home? What? Oh. Oh, yes. He wasn't my husband or my boyfriend, even. He won't bother me. Okay, then. Here, let me help you on with your coat. Thank you. There you are. you have a car? No, I'll get a cab. There's always one out in front. Good, I'll help you. Thank you. Say, uh, look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm staying here in Vicksburg at the Plantagen, and I doubt if I'll be able to get a plane out tonight. Probably not until tomorrow sometime. So, look, if you need me for any reason at all, why don't you just call me? Okay? Yes. Thank you. Good. Cab, taxi. You're still worried about him, aren't you? Why do you say that? The way you looked around when we stepped outside here just now. Would you like me to see you home? Oh, no. No, thank you. You've done enough already. And about him, I made a mistake, that's all. Oh, we all make mistakes, so forget about it. Well, I'm afraid this one can't be corrected very easily. But here's my cab... Good night, Mr. Dollar. Good night. You and I will probably never meet again. But I shan't forget your kindness. Thank you. Okay, good night. Downtown, please. I hope you have a nice trip home, Mr. Dollar. Hey. Whoa, driver, hold it. Hey, anything wrong? What is it? I don't know. I have the strangest feeling. Wait a minute, driver. Hey. Look, do you feel all right? You're shivering. Yes, I... I know I... Oh, oh it hurts. Oh, what, what hurts? It hurts. I didn't think he... What, what is it? What can I do? Help me. Please, Mr. Dollar. Help me. Let's go, driver. She fell back across the seat of the cab, writhing with pain. I took her in my arms and tried to find out what it was, but by that time she wasn't able to speak. In another ten seconds, she was unconscious. The cab driver delivered us to an emergency hospital five minutes later. They carried her in through the ambulance entrance. I let the driver go and waited around the desk to see if I could learn what happened. Just waited. Vicksburg emergency. Waited. One moment, please. Go ahead, please. Vicksburg emergency. Not at this time of the night, sir. You'll have to call first thing in the morning. I'd suggest any time after 7.30. Yes, sir. Yes? Hey, uh, look, would it be all right to go back and talk to the doctor now? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, 
Could you bring him out here? I've been waiting for quite... I'm sure he'll be out in a very short while. He knows you're waiting to talk with him. I thought maybe he forgot me. No, sir. I just want to make sure she's all right. The doctor will be out. Vicksburg Emergency. Just a moment, I'll connect you. Go ahead, please. Has she had many of these attacks, sir? Hmm. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I just met her. Oh. Well, if you'd like, we could call you at home and let you know how she is. This isn't my home. I'm on my way out of town as soon as I can get a plane. I'll wait. Certainly. Excuse me. Yes, doctor? Yes, he's right here. Yes, sir, thank you. The doctor will see you now, sir. Good, thanks. End of the hall, room 111. Okay, thank you. I don't know what it was or why that hallway looked so long to me. Call it an old-fashioned premonition or what have you. That's what I had walking down the hall to see a doctor about a girl I'd known only a few minutes. There were three people in the room, two doctors in their white clothes and a nurse. I can still see the light burning above their heads, the way they looked tired, exhausted. All three of them had been working very hard. Doctor? Yes? Oh, uh, you're the man who was with her. Yeah, that's right. How is she? When did this happen? About a half hour ago. I put her in a cab at the Plantagen Hotel, and she complained of feeling sick. So I brought her here, but she lost consciousness in the cab. I see. Sit down, please. Oh, why? Some papers we want you to fill out, just routine. Oh. Your name, please? Johnny Dollar. And she is Mrs. Dollar? No. Oh, I see. Uh, you're a friend of hers, Mr. Dollar. Well, yes. Look, what is it, Doctor? What's the matter with her? I can't exactly tell you that right now, Mr. Dollar. What? Well, now, wait a minute. Why can't We you... have to contact her family first, Mr. Dollar. This girl is dead. Now, if you're willing to fill out... Picture it. Yourself in my position, I mean. I'd known the girl only a few minutes. I didn't even know her name. Yet somehow I'd become closely involved with her. Too much so, I guess. All I knew about her was that she was someone who had died while asking me to help her. Under the circumstances, what would you do? Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's exciting episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, how can you help a dead girl? Somebody had to help her, and guess who? Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 